We are getting bombarded with yeah, tree I'll, stuff now. I'll be on it. I'm on it. That's it's just be like my... doing, <laughs> doing the picking the entire time. I'm back. Camouflage. Just <laughs> blending into the yeah, background. Blending in with the, the tree stuff. Who are you and why? Who am I? I'm uh, Darren Fisher. I work on Chrome. Welcome. Chrome engineering. So you were there right at the start of, of Chrome. Yes, right? yes. You've, you've been... Middle of 2006, we got started coding. So... Wait, 2006? 2006. Oh, Chrome so launched so in 2008, but we started in Oh, the launch. Because I was like, wait, wait, I thought we were talking about the 10-year anniversary. Like, it's yeah. 12 years now. That's why I tell people, like, 10 years? It's it been takes 12. It so, takes two years to build a browser. It took two years to build a browser. Now, mind you, that's without the rendering engine. We just used WebKit. We were WebKit based, um, yeah. That's right. That already existed. Yeah, right and when I say we didn't have in the beginning a team that could go and build a rendering engine like that. So, I mean, that, that's an undertaking. Yeah. Isn't it? And so How many the, people were at the start? Well, we were actually, you have to go back, rewind the clock a little bit because we were a team at Google working on Firefox. And uh, the whole idea that's was. That's something I didn't expect. Yeah. So for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, I, I joined Google in 2000, beginning of January 2005. So. Okay. Uh, we had a little small team um, bootstrapped out of Google security to uh, invest in making web browsers work better. Google's business um, depends a lot on the web, obviously, yeah. and the idea of actually investing in Firefox seemed like a really great way to make the web work better. Yeah, okay. So quick, quick question in between. You said you started in 2005. Do you remember your interview question? Yeah, totally. I interviewed with the Gmail team. Do really? you really want to know the interview questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, curious now. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, we're not going to try them. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> we want to keep our right jobs. But. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's 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 some of these are banned questions now in the Google. Uh, oh, that's good. So Google yeah. interviews uh, yeah. slate. So because they get asked so many darn times. Right. But there was things like uh, draw a line on a mono um, a monochromatic bitmap. So imagine you have a monochrome bitmap. So ones and zeros, and oh. draw a line on that. So it's getting you to do um, bit shift <laughs> operators. Oh. Yeah. I had another question, which was, um, uh, uh, given an array of integers, find the uh, the max and min values in that ar array or something like this. And so they just have you pretty much write a brute force algorithm for okay. that. And then they ask if you can do it faster. And you're like, wait, but I gave you, that was so simple. Why, how is there a faster <laughs> Why way? would you make it harder? <laughs> yeah. See, when I, if they ask me, you know, can you do it faster? I think I would have like deleted the code and then just typed the same code again, but like really gone for the typing, <laughs> yeah. especially because I knew it now. Yeah, yeah, I, that I was just, that, like, that would have been a misinterpretation of the question. But but you know, thinking outside of the box, what I call it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for some reason, when you said like a, a line on a monochromatic bitmap, like it, I've got a very visual memory. So when you said like there's a monochromatic bitmap, I imagined a sheet of paper stuck to the wall with a black and white picture on. Yeah. And you said you got to draw a line on it, and I like, just give me the black <laughs> marker. Can I? Do I, I get now? the job? <laughs> That's why you're in DevRel. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've, I've been here while products and stuff have, have launched, and there's a, a period of sort of picking, uh, trying to figure out the name of the thing we're yeah, launching. Yeah. There's always code names. Yeah. What other things could Chrome have been called? Oh, yeah. So the code base was originally called Goose. <laughs> Wait, that, I, I did not see that coming. That was the um, <laughs> in, in the internal repository originally called Goose. Yeah. yeah. Just because I don't, somebody came up with it, it's random. So when you ask somebody engineers to name things, you get na random names. Yeah, so then I we think. asked the team to come up with a good name for the project, mm -hmm. and they came up with a whole bunch of other random names. Anything and I think I think out? in general the engineers didn't necessarily take the process very seriously. <laughs> so a lot of names that were um, pretty silly. Because <laughs> well, uh, Chrome, and then yes, then, then our, Chrome. our our engineering. Uh, I think it was our engineering manager came up with the idea of Chrome. And he said, you know, well, let's just call it Chrome. Forget all those names you guys came up with. Because I mean, in the end, like the Chrome is what you, what you in that day was just called the. Yeah, the well, Firefox yeah, so, so, called the rest of the browser, so, so, right? The so Chrome of an application is the, the, uh, the UI around the Yeah, the window area, border right? kind yeah. of. The window border. In fact, um, yeah, absolutely in Firefox, Chrome refers to that part of the browser, the, all the Zool parts of, of the UI. And uh, if you, I, I mentioned Zool. If I need to explain that, let me know. Zool Runner, I, I remember. Yes. Well, anyway, so you know, in Chrome, in WebKit, even there's like APIs that refer to like informing the Chrome of of the browser about state changes. And so we just called the browser Chrome. It was almost like a, a joke. It's kind almost of. a pun, yeah. Yeah, and then so 
We didn't actually expect that to be the name of the product. The joke's gone too far now. Yeah, Here we are. Ten years later. <laughs> so at some point, they're like, hmm, if we put Google in front of it, could that just be the product name? <laughs> Let's see if we can get that past. Uh, I would have loved to see that with through the, the naming process. The idea of Chrome also kind of evolved into this um, uh, emphasis on content, not Chrome. So you know, this idea, this this guiding principle of we're here to build a browser that that's like the users care about the content that they're engaging with, not about using the browser, right? And so if you think about it, we wanted to have this. That sort of informed a minimalistic approach to the browser UI. Mm, so you don't want to go back to the times in IE where you had like 18 different search bars. Yeah, exactly. Those were yeah, good exactly. times. So like minimize the Chrome. It's called Chrome, but minimize the Chrome. So, so I, are we, are we going to keep working on Chrome for like 40 years? Like I'm trying to figure out if I can years. just ride this job to retirement yeah, I think or whether I need something. That's a plans. good choice. Good career choice. Yeah, the web's, yeah. web's going to be around. Yeah, the web's be okay. been around for a long time. It's going to continue to be around for a long time. The, the fundamental concepts of the web, you know, an open platform uh, where anybody can publish content and others can come along and bring that content to users through different form factors. It's actually remarkable, right? It is. And I think that adds an amazing staying power. And the stuff from the 90s still works. I mean, the, the canonical example at this point is Space Jam, Space which Jam. Yeah. people still love to, to open up, apparently. The first ever website that yeah. still works. Still works. Well. Yeah, that wasn't Space Jam. That, no, that, <laughs> yes, that wasn't no, so. very, very close. But was, like, it's interesting to see how the web evolves from a world with you know, desktop computing to mobile computing. Yeah. And uh, you know, watches. now with yeah, watches, VR, AR, everything, and so on and so forth as form factors change that fundamental principles of, of a, a open way in which people can publish content, and then others can figure out how to um, bring that content to users in new form factors is there. It's, it's, there's an opportunity created. It so feels like, like the foot one of the, like a lot of different systems have promised that multi-platform, right. uh, like yeah, running everywhere thing, but it feels like the web's the first one that's really actually Yeah, it's worked. kind of there by default. Yeah. And so with Chrome gonna being, being around for the foreseeable future, what is the thing you look forward to in like the near future of Chrome? What are the next upcoming things that you think that's a big one? Oh, well, I mean, there's so many things we're there working is, on. There is, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm really pick excited. Pick a favorite. Yeah, <laughs> really, I know. I'm, I'm, Which of your children are your favorite? You know, I'm pretty jazzed about, uh, about the future with uh, uh, thinking about WebAssembly, for example, and the opportunity that creates for developers, especially folks who, um, you know, have their roots in, or they have a bunch of C code that they want to, they wish they could bring to users through the web. Tapping into this existing ecosystem of C has been around for years and it's not been usable on the web. Yeah, and suddenly, just, it I is. Mean, I was really excited to see what the, the work AutoCAD did, to, yeah. or Autodesk did to bring AutoCAD to uh, the web through WebAssembly. I think it's really exciting because uh, there's just actually a lot of, um, not only a lot of code in, written that way, but also a lot of developers who know how to. Um, how to how to create cool things this way, and I think we're it just gonna, creates a lot more opportunity. We're going to link the WebAssembly talk because they have AutoCAD presenting it's what they did, which is absolutely amazing. So that's going to be really cool. And but, it, I think actually the thing that's amazing is they made previous attempts to bring some of their uh, applications to the web, but it was only until WebAssembly that it was actually possible for them to do it yeah. in, a, in a reasonable fashion, right? And get a good result. Yeah, something I wanted to build for years was a like a, an image compressor on the web, like something yeah. that brings all the existing codecs in. And it's something I, I tried like five years ago when ASM was a thing, but couldn't quite get there. Some yeah, of the memory yeah. management stuff wasn't there. I think it but, doesn't. It doesn't really scale to say the browser has to bake in APIs for everything you could possibly want to do. Yeah. Rather, to give the right low-level primitives so that developers can build. Um, not just great applications, but also frameworks that allow others to build great applications and for people to be able to innovate on a, on that foundation. You know, that means we have to, we can't possibly think about all the stuff that people are going to do, but we have to build a platform that, you know, creates more uh, freedom. Together. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to be able to build like a, a something that can display and compress WebP in Safari, a browser that doesn't support it natively, and, and now now we can do it. That's something you've done. Lego. Just, it's, yeah. Yeah, that's so right. put together. Give the building blocks. Yeah. Give the building blocks. Yeah. When someone's suggesting like names for products and someone goes, no, we can't have that. That's a silly name. I just I, I stop everyone and say, we all work at a company called Google. Yes. <laughs> right? That might seem normal now. <laughs> but if you tell people about that, yeah. it sounds ridiculous.